Our fifth and final minim entry from the Patreon division of our 2019 orchestration challenge, orchestrating Mussorgsky's The Seamstress, is from Timothy, and I really enjoyed this. I mean, I you know so far I'm just not seeing any duds or anything, and any any orchestrations that don't excite me and intrigue me and and leave me with uh, you know, interesting ideas. So there are a few things here that you need to fix. Okay, so for instance, A1. Okay, what you mean is one period or one with a little zero next to it, right? So it should, it should look like this. Right, so that is um, that is just me activating the text and then using option zero to create the little zero next to it. All right. Anyhow, <laughs> yeah. So so like yeah, a one just means with one, but that doesn't tell us which instrument it is. Right. Okay. So the whole thing about a two is that it is telling the conductor that both instruments, like if you have two flutes, which it actually should be marked here, right? You can't just say flute, you need to say two flutes, right? Or, you know, two clarinets in B-flat. Or clarinets one and two in B-flat. Okay, but you can't, but like, you know, that is telling us, when you say A2, that is telling us that two players are being used, right? Um, but A1 doesn't tell us which player is being used, so nobody uses A1, okay? So don't do that. What you need to do is just to tell us is which player is being used, right? So in this case, probably the, f you know, the first player, right? Um, and if you don't like doing that, you can always throw in rests, right? Um, like, for instance, you could put in, like, the second voice rest here, and that would force all of the articulations and... <clears throat> excuse me, and slur marks above the beam, or it won't, I don't know if it'll force the, the accents above the beam in Sibelius, but anyways, that's where they should be. But yeah, here you see, right, accents below the beam, because we're going to two voices. And then you could do the same exact thing here, right? But all you have to do is just say one period, right? Or one with a little zero next to it, if you want to be more sort of French or Italian about it. Okay, <clears throat> so yeah, so you've got your two harps here, and I don't know if you even needed, do you know what I mean? It's, yeah, you know, like, I'm seeing, right, okay, so, so, right, yeah, I mean, there's plenty of time for the harpist to retune, but yeah, it's less fuss, um, yeah, certainly is less fuss to do it this way. So that's all good. I actually like that a lot. And <clears throat> so, you know, with commenting on that, just to say that this is a really nice score. I just really enjoyed the bustling energy of it. So this is a little bit of an extension of the idea that we saw in the last score that had a, an all woodwind approach, right? So you start with a woodwind approach here with the flute um, playing in first voice. And um, it, it, you know, it's, it's eventually going to feel a little overwhelmed. Do you know what I mean? Because these are stronger instruments in more in, in uh, registers that project better, right? <clears throat> but it's all right. The, the flute can hold their own so long as everybody remains soft. 
Okay, it's, it's not the most ideal place, but it'll work, it, you know, if the conductor balances things. All right, so, and then you start to bring in winds, sorry, uh, strings, um, with Arco, Divisi. Now, you know, you could have had Divisi, Arco, and Pizzicato, right? I mean, it won't sound like Pizzicato and Arco in the same staff in, in Sibelius. So if you want the playback effect... Then you have to supply the Divisi here with two staves, right? Sorry about that scratching noise. That's my cat. He's um, he's very anxious to have some breakfast, but he's just going to have to wait till I'm done with this because I'm having too much fun. So moving on, we have more of a democratic blend here of winds and strings, right? Rather than it being mostly wind te uh, texture. And same thing again. Now here you go, F-sharp melodic minor. Look, um, harpists don't need to read this. All they need is this. And actually, they need it here, and you don't need to write it out, right? So, like, you're writing out the gliss. All you need to do is put, have the endpoints, right? Just have the, you know, the F-sharp and the E-sharp here. And then that is what gets the little, you know, this little thing. So you don't need to... You know, you don't need to tell them what the tuning is. Just, you know, you know, in, in text, like what the, what the, not tuning, excuse me, what the, um, what the harmonic context is, right? That's, that's useless. Just, just give them this particular thing and just put it here, okay? And just have the end points, All right? So just put, score it exactly like this, quarter note, to eighth note and then just put the line in there and if you want the pitches then get yourself the harp glissando um the harp glissando plug-in all right which i've got right here all right uh where is it here we go harp glissando all right and that can supply all the pitches in your glissando correctly rather than just doing white keys, which it will do if you just put a glissando line there from the lines menu in Sibelius. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry, my screen keeps jumping around. Okay, so... Just to talk about the texture and so on, I like this. I like the way that you go back to flute and then you add clarinet at the octave, and then you have the strings come in to make it fuller. And this is interesting, this idea was also thought of by the um, by another orchestrator in the first web first of the website evaluations. That, you know, that uh, boom crash. And I think that's a it's a pretty strong one. You know, I, I could imagine another orchestrator like um, Gliere or um, Maybe Glazanov, had they decided to orchestrate this, maybe having thrown that in there. Pretty dramatic, right? <clears throat> Once again, um, like see here, A2, right? So it really is both players, but you don't need to say A1, right? Because that's just, just tell us one, period, or one with a little zero, right? Or if you are really into the whole horn thing, you could put the Roman numeral one. <laughs> now, um, yeah, uh, trills uh, are very effective on brass, but you just have to realize that they have a kind of a ripping sound, right? Um, not that, not the beautiful fluid fluidity of uh, wind trills or the um, or the wonderful bustle of a string section playing trills. It just really has a kind of a ripping kind of a kind of a sound. So just just be aware of that. I mean, it's very effective. Uh, Stravinsky used it a lot, and um, yeah, but you don't you don't often see it. So you just you have to really know you know have to really be sure that that is the effect you want. But yeah, this is this is you know I'm I'm not really seeing anything that is weak scoring per se. Um, I feel the absence of the strings right here. Do you know what I mean? So like what you do is you change instruments. <clears throat> you keep sort of the same plan here, just kind of trading um, that note to 
that that idea that phrase to uh horn and then just put in a pop here with the trumpets so i mean and then this is going to be very very rippy uh horn first horn and first trumpet both trilling and you know like mezzo forte in the harp right you hear your forte sforzando with these trills and you got mezzo forte this should be fortissimo because no otherwise nobody's going to hear it there'll just be a slight little buzz or like little kind of lift in the background but nobody's going to hear this so yeah so watch out for the balance here <clears throat> yeah you know here you could be going up to i think you should indicate fortiss fortissimo here right and then everybody else could be mezzo forte or forte, right? Just because you need the balance there. Otherwise, the strings are going to get overwhelmed. Now, did you notice in your mock-up how you just really heard the first clarinet very, very loud here? Well, I'll tell you the reason why. It's because if we select these bars, we can see that the very last dynamic that was assigned to this staff was a mezzo forte. Now let's select this bar and what you can see is that this is a second voice dynamic, right? Okay, so I'm going to teach you a, uh, a shortcut to select your dynamics, which is shift alt or shift option D, D for dynamics. All right, so I just did that and I've got these all selected. Now I'm going to use another shortcut, shortcut uh, which is Option Command or Alt Command K to get the keypad down here. And then I'm just going to select Voice 1 here, or All actually. I'm going to select All. <clears throat> and there we go. So now if I were to play that back, then you would hear both clarinets playing softly at the beginning. The problem is that the first clarinet just plays mezzo forte all the way through, and you don't get any of this effect. Now, by the way, I felt this was very fussy, just to indicate every single dynamic. Yes, we are in a situation where um, you, you can't really crescendo, right? But I think that hairpins will do the job. What you could do is mezzo piano, hairpin, and then hairpin back to piano and that just means to bring out the middle and then the end can be soft and then of course you can put your mezzo forte here down to piano I mean you know like I've said many times before the difference between mezzo piano and mezzo forte is hardly anything right it's you know it is not a step ladder where um, where piano is soft and mezzo piano is a little louder and mezzo forte is a little louder and then forte is a little louder and those all those steps are evenly spaced and then if you keep going you know the forte to fortissimo right so like people get it in their head that the difference between mezzo piano and mezzo forte is the same amount of dynamic difference as the difference between forte and fortissimo and it just isn't right you know mezzo piano is a moderation of the feeling of restraint right and mezzo forte is a moderation of the feeling of force right they are emotional right they are emotional and coloristic more than they are scientific okay so anyway uh, other than that i mean this this yeah you have to write if you're going to put in the hairpins and then get rid of the mezzo fortes in the middle up here then you could put mezzo forte there and then you know then that makes more sense but like yeah Anyways, I'm just, just trying to get people off the mezzo, right? Okay. <clears throat> so other than that, I really enjoyed this. It was it was very cool, Timothy. And, you know, please feel free or feel, you know, welcome to submit uh, to the next challenge or you have, like, any ideas um, that you want to want me to evaluate here on Patreon. You know, if you get a project then that you need another set of eyes on, then, you know, please share it, and I'll, I'm happy to take a look, you know, at a few pages for you.